everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today is about the area of quadrilaterals. Area of quadrilaterals. Now previously, there was a previous video I should say, a uh, link down in the description below, talking about the names of quadrilaterals and what they are, like all the precision about them. So now is about area. Okay, what do we mean when we mean area? You can see the little grid marks, which I just horribly drew right there. You know what? Let's turn on the ink to shape so it doesn't look so ridiculously awful. No, it didn't work. Oh my goodness. There we go. Isn't that so much nicer? All right. So when we have our, our area, when we're talking about area, kind of center this here, it means how many literally how many of these squares are there in the shape you go how many squares are there yeah well have you ever heard them say the area of this is 10 inches squared it literally means how many little squares are there that are an inch by an inch one inch by one inch how many of those squares are in that thing if it's different units if it is you know meters squared then it's ah there's a little square that is one meter by one meter how many of those squares are in that object that is all we are doing when we talk about area so let's start with our standard a square Eh, that didn't quite turn out how i wanted let's do a little ah that's that's, that's close that's close enough for what we're doing okay so you can see it's pretty much three wow it's hard to do going up okay right. so we look at there's three squares wide and three squares tall i'm going to say that each of these squares is an inch by an inch so we're going to say it's three inches wide and three inches tall well, how many little squares are in here? We can see them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or three times three. Three times three. That tells us how many there are. There are three rows. You can look at it either way. There's three rows, or sorry, three columns of three squares each, three times three or there's three rows of three squares each, three times three, either way, three times three. So the area of a square, the way you'll usually see it written is area equals S squared. It just means because a, a square has the same length on both sides. So you can just pick one of those sides I could square this three times three or square that three times three. Doesn't matter. So that's how they're going to write it. Area equals S squared. But this is all it's meaning. The base times the height, or length times width. You can phrase it either way. Okay, so that's area of a square. Pretty straightforward, right? How about of does not want to clear? Seriously? Clear that canvas. All right, how about a rectangle? Again, if you have any questions on the definitions, please watch the video below for the definitions of these different quadrilaterals. All right, so now we have a rectangle. I'm still using my little inches. Each of these blocks is an inch by an inch. All right, how many blocks high or how many inches high? And it's two. And it's five inches wide. And if I look inside, I see there are 10 little squares. And what is two times five? It is 10. So 10 inches squared or 10 little square inches. And you can see them because this is either, either way you look at it, five columns of two blocks each or two rows of five blocks each. Either way, two times five. So the way you're going to see this written is area equals length times width. And that just means you're multiplying these two. Now, 
one question I've seen people like, well, which one's the length? Which one's the width? It doesn't matter. Because let's say, okay, well, I'm going to multiply. I'm going to turn this rectangle on its side. Well, now five and two. They've swapped places. Oh, no. The area will be different. No, it won't. It doesn't matter. You're just multiplying the two sides together. So don't don't get too hung up on which is the length and which is the width and like, but what if I rotate it and then the length is the other and then the width is, ah, what do I do? Just We just multiply. Um, side note, if you're wondering why they do a little cursive L, that is just for um, making it less confusing when you see it because if you write a lowercase L, it looks like the number one. So you'll often see it loopy cursive L for length times width. That's the rectangle. So, so far so easy, right? Now on to the next one. This is where it gets a little trickier to visualize, but the formula isn't any harder. It's a parallelogram, a parallelogram. And you're like, ah, well, if I'm trying to count the squares inside that thing, how do I do that? Well, here's the formula. I'm going to give you the formula first on this one. Area equals base times height. The base, and this is important, these cannot be, <laughs> you can't um, say that this is the base. This is very important. This bottom bit is the base. The height is not that. The height is this how tall it is, just like your height is how tall you are. Now, why is this so important? That's the base and that's the height. Here's what's happening with a parallelogram. You're like, how do you know this to be true? Okay. So here's what's happening. Look at this triangle that I've just made by drawing that little height line. Can you see how Come on. Oh, don't do that. Whiteboard messing up on me. Do you see how it would fit right there? Yeah. Imagine if I took, it's going to be the world's worst scissors, scissors and cut this off. If I had a paper parallelogram, I cut it off and then I turned and I taped it on this end, I would have a rectangle, right? It'd be a rectangle. Now, what do we know about rectangle? A rectangle, the area is length times width. It's how long this times this. Well, we've just made a rectangle and what is, what are the two dimensions I should say? Well, this little bit right here, has just moved over here. I haven't added or subtracted anything. So the base right here, this measurement I had for the base, it still is the measurement for this. It's the same because this bit just moved over here. I just slid it over. Okay, so I have my, I have that corresponding bit is the same as this right there. And then this part of the rectangle, the other bit we need to multiply by is the height of the parallelogram. So that's why a parallelogram is just like a rectangle. It's just like the one piece. You could view it as saying that this piece right here was cut off of the rectangle and moved over here and it made it into a parallelogram. So that's why the areas, uh, the formula for the areas are exactly the same. Okay. A rhombus. Don't really think we need to do much on a rhombus. Um, it's the same It's because it's a parallelogram. It's just a parallel parallelogram with four equal sides. Same principle applies. It is base times height. Same reason, I could cut this little triangle off, stick it over here, and I'd have a rectangle, and then I would be multiplying those two dimensions, and then there we go. Okay, so it's just like a rectangle. So rhombus, parallelogram, same exact thing. 
All right, now the very interesting or different one of the, I, I can't ever get the lines to be parallel whenever it does the auto draw. Okay, there we go. The trapezoid. Now that little trick doesn't quite work. I can't cut this triangle piece off and put it over here. Those aren't the same. That won't work. So what can I do here? How can I do this? Well, here's what's happening with a trapezoid. It is kind of that thing, but it's a little different. And this one, I'm going to show you the formula at the end, because the formula, I think, on its own is very confusing looking. But if you see how we get there, it, hopefully it'll be a little less so. Let's imagine I drew a line right the middle here. Let's imagine I could draw a line, I'm trying to find like the midpoint of this side. Okay, and I drew a straight line like that, okay? And the same thing on this side. I'm going to find the midpoint of this side and draw a straight line up and down. Okay. Do you see I made a triangle? Could I cut that triangle off and put it there? Yeah, I could. And it's going to work. What about over here? Could I cut this triangle off? I'm actually going to use a different color just because I'm fancy. Could I cut this triangle off and put it here? Yes, I could. Hey, I've got a rectangle again. Okay. So I've got, now I've made a rectangle. Then what is the area of the rectangle? Well, I've cut these bits off. I cut that bit off and moved it up there. So that's now been added to the top bit. And I've cut this off and added it up here. So now that's up here. And now they're the same. And if I wanted to find the area of this rectangle, I would multiply. Those are my two measurements. I'm hesitating to use the length and width. I don't want to, if you're wondering why I'm not saying that with the rectangle, it's because some say length and width, some say base and height. I just want you to visualize what pieces um, are being used, what parts are being used instead of getting hung up on the words right now. Okay, so those are my two bits. I'm actually going to do it in, in purple, so we're using a different color. Okay, so there's our two measurements we would be multiplying with this rectangle. Okay, but how do I know what the length of this new base is? Hmm. Well, it is, it's, you know, the whole length minus these two pieces, which then got moved up to here. So now they're the same. They're the same length now. I've made them the same. This is the same length as that. Okay. How could I do that? How could I take, figure out what number I need to take off the bottom to add to the top to make them the same? Well, let's put some real numbers in here. What if the bottom was 10 and the top was eight? And I wanted to take something off the bottom, add it to the top, so that they would be the same. Well, if I subtracted one off the bottom and added one to the top, I would have nine on the top and nine on the bottom. Well, that's what I'm looking for, right? I want it so that they are the same. What I've done is I've averaged them. I've averaged the top and the bottom. Averaging, just as a reminder, if you haven't done this in a while, you add up any uh, quantity of numbers. You can have two numbers, five numbers, a million numbers. You add them all up and you divide by the number of numbers you added. By which I mean, if I said, what's the average of five, six, and two, I would add them up and then say, okay, there's one, two, three numbers. I divide by three. That's how we average. Okay, and that's the truth, true for all of them. What's the average of one, two, three, and six? All right, that is, there's four numbers there. I divide by four. That's how we average. We add them up and we say, how many numbers? That's what I divide by. Okay, well, now here's easy. We only have two, right? 
So I would say 10 plus 8 divided by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So I've made them even. I averaged them. So that's what you're going to do for this. You're going to take the top and the bottom and average them, then multiply by the height. Okay, because when you average them, it's like you took this bit down here, moved it up there, took this bit here, moved it up here, and you made yourself a, tri a rectangle. Excuse me, almost a triangle. <laughs> You've made yourself a rectangle. Okay, so when you have a trapezoid, man, I cannot make these parallels <laughs> save my life. Oh, one last try, one last try, and then I just give up and just accept my inability to draw parallel lines. Yep, I just can't draw parallel lines. We're going to assume these are parallel and that I have drawing skills, even when helped by a computer, or <laughs> straight line drawing skills. In a trapezoid, we have a top and a bottom. The terms they're gonna use for this is they're gonna call this base one, or B1, and they're gonna call this one B2. Two. Oops, sorry, not an exponent, B2. Just like how a parallelogram, you had base times height. This, they're calling it a base, but they're two different ones, so it's base one and base two. Now we want to average those. So remember to average, we add them together, and there's two numbers, so we divide by two. That averages them, and then we need to multiply by averaging them, we've made a rectangle, and then we multiply by the height. And that is your formula for the area of a trapezoid. If you're just presented with this and saying area is B1 plus B2 divided by 2 times height, it's like, what on earth? What are you doing? This is what that means. You're just taking those two sides, the top and the bottom, the two bases, you're averaging them to make it a nice little rectangle, and then you multiply by the height, just like you do with all of these different ones. All of these are some variation of a base times a height. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.